promised land? It is heaven, right? And we are bound to that beautiful place. Our opening song is number 633. Number 633, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen? Amen. Please stand with us. If you had a whole day dedicated to your best friend, what would you do? Would you go out to the movies? Would you go out to a restaurant? Would you go out on a hike? Whatever you would do, you would spend most of the time talking to them, communing with them. And today, we're going to talk about a day that's given to us in which we can just talk to our best friend, Jesus Christ. This sermon, this sermon is entitled, How to Enjoy the Rest of Your Life. So, at the beginning of this sermon, we're going to go over the book of beginnings. But before I do that, let's just offer up a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be just a vessel in which you can show your light. And Father, I pray that you hide me behind your cross and behind your message. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, so yes, the book of beginnings. In Genesis 1 and chapter 2, we see that God created everything that is in six days. He created the grass. He created the trees. He created you and I. Well, not right then, but he created man. He also created all the animals and the light and the waters. He created everything. He just spoke it into existence. But on the seventh day, God did something very interesting. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work. Did God get tired here? 
the God who spoke with infinite power the reality that we live in right now, did he get tired and he had to go take a nap for a day? Well, Isaiah 40, verse 28 says, Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. So God definitely didn't get tired at this point. So the question begs us, why did God rest at this point? In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, for I will give you rest. God knows that it is not good for us to constantly toil, to constantly work and have no rest. In fact, according to research done by the government, research has uncovered many conditions about us humans that seem to rise and fall in seven-day cycles. So our circadian rhythm, our sleep patterns, our immune system, and many other systems actually go on a seven-day cycle. So, on the seventh day, we actually have a lower heart rate of 15%, and we have a lower blood pressure of around 10 to 15%. God created us to yearn. Our own body yearns for this rest of the seventh day. Now, we'll go more into the seventh day in a second, but I would like to go to Exodus chapter 3. In this story, we see that Moses comes in communion with God in the burning bush. And the Bible says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And God said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes off thy feet. For the place whereupon thou stand is on holy ground. God spoke to Moses to be reverent where his presence was. God revealed his presence in the burning bush and the glory was so magnificent. If Moses continued any further, he would be consumed. But God is also calling us to leave aside the common things, take off the shoes off of our feet and dust them off and leave them behind and come into a very special communion with him. You see, just as the presence of God made this simple ground holy, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, or made it holy, or set it apart for sacred use. And just in the same way that Moses was commanded to leave his shoes off from entering into the presence of the Lord, God commands us in Isaiah fifty-eight thirteen: If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thine own pleasure on my holy day, if you get the common things out of your life as you approach to me, says the Lord, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. Now, some of you may be thinking, I thought we were supposed to worship God every day of the week. And to this, I gotta completely agree with you. We should be faithful followers of God every day of the week, just like a husband is faithful to his wife every day of the year. But, just like the husband has an anniversary where he's supposed to set everything aside and devote time and effort to just loving his wife, the same way God is calling us on a weekly anniversary every week to lay everything aside and focus on him. So, are we saved by keeping the Sabbath? Oftentimes, when we talk about the Sabbath, People might think, oh, that sounds a little legalistic, sounds like you're trying to be saved by works. But Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. We don't believe that we're saved on what we do, but we're saved on who we know. Who do we know? He is a source of your wisdom, life in Christ Jesus. 
whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation, and it is not by our own works that we are saved, but through Jesus Christ. It is only through knowing Jesus, not just knowing of Jesus, not just understanding our parents had a relationship with them, but knowing him ourselves, really understanding who he is and having a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, are we going to be saved? Have you ever noticed after a few years of couples being together, they start to look a little alike? They start to look really similar. They adopt the same mannerisms. They incorporate the same habits. They kind of uh, speak the same way. And after a while, a couple of years, you start to think, are these two related or something? <laughs> and in the same way that they spent so long together, they just looked at each other with love and they're like, wow, I really admire your character. They start to become one in a way. And in the same way, Jesus Christ is calling us to spend time with him so that we can look a lot like him and that the matchless charms of Christ would be manifest in our lives. And the Sabbath is a day in which we get to lay everything aside and bask in the beauty of Jesus. Look at him and just say, wow, I really want to be like you. And this is necessary for our salvation. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And so in Ezekiel 20, 12, uh, the Bible says, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them or makes them holy. See, just like the ground and the burning bush was made holy by the presence of the Lord, us, mere flesh, dust even, are going to be made holy by partaking of the presence of the Lord. And this is a process of sanctification, of becoming more and more like Jesus. And so, we might not want to lay everything aside and to devote ourselves to really beholding the love of Christ. And there's a reason behind this. Jesus says in Luke 7, 47, he says, Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, speaking of Mary, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. The single fact that we don't want to spend this time with God and really lay everything aside is because we love something more than we love God. And if we love something more than we love God, we're going to let that get in the way of our relationship with God. But if we really realize the gift that Jesus Christ has given to us of his own blood, of taking upon him our sins, our woes, our pains, if we constantly behold what he has done for us, love will be awakened in our hearts. And if we love someone, are we going to spend time with them? Hopefully. It's not a long distance relationship, or at least it won't be for too long. We are told that love is the fulfillment of the law. And if love is the fulfillment of the law, wouldn't it make more sense that we keep the Sabbath because we want to spend time with God and not necessarily because we want to be saved? So if we love Jesus, we will want to be near him. We will want to abide with him, to live with him. In John fifteen fourteen, it says, He that says he abides in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So if we want to be close with Jesus, we need to be able to walk with Jesus. And can two walk together lest they agree? No, they can't. So which day did Jesus Christ keep holy? And we read, Luke 4.16 says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So when Jesus was alive as a child and throughout his ministry, he would go into the synagogues 
and he would worship there. And not only did Jesus Christ keep the Sabbath whenever he was alive, but in the account of the crucifixion, we read, and the Sabbath and the day that the preparation and the day of preparation and the Sabbath drew on, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now upon the first day of the week they came unto the sepulchre. So preparation day is Friday according to the Bible. Then, just as Jesus rested in the grave, so are we to rest in the Sabbath day on Saturday. And then the first day, Sunday, is the day afterwards. So most of Christianity knows that Easter Sunday is on Sunday and Good Friday is on Friday. And in the same way that Jesus Christ died in the grave for us and rested there, he wants us to remember on the Sabbath day of how we can rest in him. And many of us who are into history, we see that Pope Gregory XIII actually changed the Gregorian calendar. And many use this as an excuse saying, we don't know which Sabbath day is right. But the U.S. government says there has been no change in the continuity of the weekly cycle according to U.S. naval uh, observations in Washington, D.C. So did Jesus intend for his people to keep the Sabbath in the last days? Jesus says in Matthew 24, speaking of the last days and what a persecution time on God's people, he says, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So, after Jesus' ministry, does the book of Revelation tell us to keep the Sabbath? Well, in Revelation 14, 6, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. 217 verses out of Revelation's 404 verses are directly found in other portions of the Old Testament. And to understand the book of Revelations, we need to look at the whole Bible to understand the significance of other places. So in Exodus 20, we see the same thing. God tells us, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. So by keeping the Sabbath day, we are acknowledging that God is not only the creator of the universe, but he can recreate us, he can sanctify us, make us holy, and this is the sign that God wants us to have of to distinguish his people in the last days. So when does the Sabbath begin and when does the Sabbath end? Leviticus 23, 32 says, From even or evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And Mark 1, 32, it says, And at even when the sun did set. So the Bible says whenever the sun sets, on Friday night, and then sun sets on Saturday night, this is the period of time in which the Sabbath is. And this is a time that we're supposed to worship God. So, how did Jesus keep the Sabbath? So, it's not enough to just rest from all of our works and kind of seclude ourselves and recline and do absolutely nothing. In fact, in Israel, there are actually Jews who refuse to do anything on the Sabbath day. It's actually really interesting. If you look into Israel, if you go there on the Sabbath day, elevators will automatically go floor to floor constantly throughout the day because they see it as a violation of the law of God if they press a button to go from one story to the next. So how did Jesus keep the Sabbath? Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. So Jesus kept the Sabbath partially in nature. He observed the creation that he himself created. 
Isn't that just amazing? Jesus Christ humbled himself down and spent time in his creation that he created. He spoke everything into existence and he was willing to condescend himself to spend time in his own creation. It's really amazing. Continuing on, it says, Early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people were coming to him and he sat down and began to teach them. So Jesus Christ found many object lessons in nature. He found many things that testified to the unseen character and nature of God. And so he didn't keep them all to himself. He went and he taught others. He wanted to bless others with the spiritual blessings that his father had given him. But more than anything, Jesus Christ loved to heal on the Sabbath day. In fact, Jesus Christ has seven miracles that took place on the Sabbath, all of them revolving around healing people. And here's just to name a few. If you feel like looking up up later, that'd be great. It would really bless you and show you a different aspect of God's character. And all of these miracles are supposed to teach us something. There are a reason that seven Sabbath miracles regarding healing are recorded in the Bible. And it's because Jesus Christ, he says, yes, you should rest, you should not labor, a secular work or anything like that, but what you need to do is you need to help others experience the blessing of rest, to be free from all the infirmities that they have, to be the hands and feet of God to a world that doesn't know him. He wants to relieve people, take the burden off of their off their backs during the Sabbath day. In Isaiah 58, verse 6, God tells us, Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to give your bread to the hungry, and that you bring the poor that are homeless into your house, when you see the naked, that you cover him? If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath from doing thine own pleasure on my holy day, then you will delight in the Lord. You know, there's something precious about helping people. Many people that don't know God devote their entire lives to organizations such as the Red Cross or disaster relief projects. But there is something special, not just saving people from disaster, but saving people's soul so that they can experience the rest of the Lord throughout eternity. And this is what God's trying to teach us. He's trying to have us to be the hands and feet of him in the world. And tonight, he's extending everyone an opportunity, saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is giving us the opportunity to come and rest. And I hope you are blessed by this special music. God took six days and created earth and moon, the sun and stars. On the seventh day he rested from the work that he has done. Then he blessed it, made it holy as a gift for every man to remind us where we came from and just how this world began. Holy day, purified, set apart, sanctified, enter into joy divine in a temple made by God. See him worship on the Sabbath. As his weekly custom was, feel the fury of the rabbis 
for he would not hear the laws. So they kill him on a hillside as the sun began to fade. But he then kept the Sabbath as they lay him in the grave. Holy day, purify, set apart, sanctify, enter into joy divine in a temple Forsaken and forgotten, desecrated them, profane. But the sacred for commandment is still valid and unchanged. Hear the Father, gentle calling. If you love me, heed each one, not for merit. For salvation, but because you love my son, holy day purified, set apart, sanctified, enter him to joy divine in a temple made by time, holy day purified. Set apart, sanctify, enter him to joy divine in a temple made by time. You will find joy divine in a temple made. Of time. Amen. Some of you listening today may have never had the knowledge of a day dedicated to you and our Lord. And today, God is giving you the same invitation that he's giving us all. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Others, we may have kept the Sabbath before, but we never truly spent it dedicated to the Lord in his presence. Today, if you want to prepare for the Sabbath day today, I want you to raise your hand with me. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, there is nothing sweeter than the rest that you offer us. Rest from all of our cares and our worries. Rest from our diseases. And rest from the toils that the world brings us. And Lord, we know that this is a promise of the rest that we will receive in heaven. Father, I pray that you would Allow us a foretaste of heaven here and allow us, Lord, to truly understand what it means to have you as our best friend and to spend the whole day interrupted with you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Our next message will take place at 11 at Sabbath and we would invite you all to come join us for a very special message. We are so pleased you could join us here at Watchtower Hills Academy and College. And if you have enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would like to support the making of these programs, you can find the donation information in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us, and may God richly bless you.